Hi everyone, I am Carolise and today we're going to be talking about a very special topic and that is how to deal with difficult stakeholders. So don't go anywhere, I will be right back. Everybody, we're talking today about dealing with difficult stakeholders. So everybody's dealt with a difficult person, right? And you know that it's no fun, right? Especially if you are the business analyst and you need these people to give you information so that you're able to do your job well and they are just completely difficult. Like, what do you do in that situation? I completely understand <laughs> because I've had to deal with difficult people in many you know projects I've worked on over the years. So the first thing to do though when you're dealing with difficult people is to first of all make sure you're talking to the right person. Make sure you have identified the right stakeholder. Not because a person has been involved in the project or you know around the project or somebody told you that they would be a good stakeholder means that they are. You have to look at your project, do some observation like I said in this video right here about how to elicit requirements that will also help you to identify who your stakeholders are and so that you know you're talking to the right person but let's say for example that you are talking to the right person they are a stakeholder and you need to get information from them but they're being difficult now you have to understand some of the reasons why people are difficult right it may not just be as obvious as it seems um, there is sometimes a resistance to change. Remember, you as a business analyst, you are an agent of change, right? When you step into a project, you're there only because they want to change something. Something is happening that they, that they want to fix or they want to change or they want to improve. And that's the reason why you're on the project. So you are an agent of change and people naturally are resistant to change. So they see you coming, they already put up their guards and they don't even want to talk to you because they know you're just here to change stuff. So you have to understand the psychology behind why people are difficult sometimes. And sometimes even further to that, the people you're talking to who are difficult, maybe they were the ones who actually championed whatever the process currently is. So it could have been their process. It could have been them that came up with it. And now you're coming to change it and they feel like that is a an insult almost to them and so they are already kind of committed to the process because they created it or they have inherited it could have been that it was passed down to them from some other boss or some other department or something and they have just been working in it and so now you come to change and they're very resistant to you so that could have been the reason why um, they're difficult mm -hmm. another reason sorry my phone's going off <laughs> Another reason is to avoid blame. So if you've been working in a process for a while and it's going awry to the point where management sends business analysts to go figure out how to fix this process, then there might be this, this feeling that, you know, I'm going to be blamed for it being wrong or I'm going to be blamed because it's not going well or it's not profitable or it's not working out. So people are a little bit, you know, um, difficult because they don't want to be identified <laughs> as the root cause and they don't want their name to float up and then for them to get the blame. So they're trying to protect themselves, a kind of a CYA activity to be difficult to you, to hinder you because they're trying to protect themselves. Um, another thing that could cause people to become difficult is this concept of seniority, right? I've been at the company so many years, I've been working here for so long, and now you come, you're a little upstart, and you wanna ask me all these questions and make all these suggestions to change things. Like, who are you? Like, where did you come from? So it's like they've been there so long, they're so ingrained in the entire process that they are resistant to you because they feel like they're up here, they're above you, they know more than you, they've been there longer than you, and here you come trying to make changes and they just don't like that because you're, you're too new. So they, they resist you and they're difficult to you for that reason. 
The other thing could be just personal, personal reasons, right? Sometimes people are going through hard times. Sometimes people are going through divorces, breakups, their children are giving trouble, you know, they have mortgage problems. I don't know. But sometimes people are going through personal issues and they just become difficult at work. Sometimes they have health issues, like they're sick and they just don't know what's gonna happen to them next. And then you come asking a bunch of questions and they just blow up on you, right? They're this difficult to you. And it also could be work frustration. Some people are like very disgruntled. Um, they have real reasons to be disgruntled. It could be that they decide, they think they should have been promoted already. They think they deserve to be paid more. Um, they see other people moving up the chain and they're not going anywhere and they've been stuck in the rut for a long time. Who knows? But there could be like work frustration on top of personal frustration. And so you don't know who you're going to get on any given day of the week. So these people, they are difficult. So sometimes it's, it's, you catch them on a good day and you get everything out of them. Sometimes you catch them on a bad day and it's like the door is closed. <laughs> right? So that's kind of sometimes the underlying reason why your stakeholders are difficult. Another reason could just be job security, right? They've been working in this process, they know the process, they've been doing it for many years, and now there's a project to improve the process, and they know when things change, people get let go, um, people's job roles change, and they don't, they don't really wanna risk their job, right? If they're doing a very manual process and there's no longer a need for that manual step, what's going to happen to them and so they have all of these things going on and when you step in there to do your interview and to elicit your requirements they just don't want to deal with you they don't they don't want to do with you you are a problem and they will just not be nice or not be helpful as they could be so these are the ways that people are difficult so sometimes they're not like openly difficult they're not like in your face with the attitude which sometimes they are and i'll talk about that in a minute but sometimes they're just giving you little cues and you're like is that person being difficult with me i mean i feel like they're just being difficult but i don't know i can't put my finger on it so i'm going to give you some ways in which people are difficult even when they're smiling they're smiling, looking like they're helping you, but they're not really helping you. And these are the things that they do. So first, they give you vague information. So you ask them a very pointed question and you're trying to drill down, and they just keep giving you pie in the sky, very high level information that you can't really use. And no matter how much you're asking pointed information, you're just getting it back you know, at this level, and you're like, wow. Yeah, they, sometimes it's not, deliberate sometimes people just don't know how to uh, explain things and so they tell you at a high level that you can't use and no matter how much you try to drill down into them you can't get it part of it is your skill as well as a business analyst how are you able to uh, challenge information how are you able to get a stakeholder to actually give you the information that you need in a very fluid way so you have to be skillful too to know how to drill down what kind of questions to ask how to probe and not just you know give them questions that they don't have the context to so if you are skillful with a stakeholder who's giving you vague information you can get that out of them um, but sometimes it's very difficult sometimes you just have to give up and say you know what maybe i'll find another stakeholder because for example if you work at a bank and i love to give my bank examples if you work at a bank and you need to talk to the bank manager and you're at a particular location and that's the bank manager you have access to and that person is just giving you vague pie in the sky information, you probably could find another branch and another bank manager who has a similar role, do the same kind of things and get that information from that person. So you don't have to stick to the one person if you can find the same role doing the same job functions in a different department or a different branch. And that way you just avoid that person altogether. You know, that's always an option if you work in that kind of environment. If you work in a small company and this is the only person who has the knowledge, you just have to up your, your, your elicitation skills. You have to, or you have to try to find some way to connect. Sometimes it's all about making the connection. You're almost like a salesperson, right? You have to build relationships with the person. So if you just come in and you're only there when you want to like, grab information out of their heads, there could be this strong resistance to you. 
But if you try to make a connection, like find out, you know, how long they've been at the company, get some background on them. Like, did they win an award last year for being, you know, head of the, I don't know, um, football committee or something? Were they like active in other things that you can connect with? Do they like sports? Do they like movies? Do they like theme parks? Like, what is it that you can find as a common ground to kind of have a relationship with them before you jump in to ask them a bunch of questions, right? So try to make that connection. Um, sometimes you can just take people for lunch, you know, hey, you know, we're going for lunch, would you like to come? You know, I want to go to lunch with you and sit and chat about something and you go to lunch, you're eating, you're in a casual environment, you can start asking them questions and maybe you get the answer that way. So you just have to be creative. <laughs> if, it's, if this is the only person that has the information that you need to fulfill your project, you're going to have to find a way to get it. You know, you just have to be creative like that. The other way that people can be difficult or stakeholders can be difficult is with shifting priorities. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean, today, and this is spe specifically, sorry, this is specifically for external clients, right? When you're dealing with a client and the client is a stakeholder and you're working on a project and when you talk to the client, you're like, the most important thing for us is ABC. You know, this is the first three things that we want to get done in this project. And you run off to try and do those and the next time you talk to them they're like oh well you know what we actually want to do d first and d is more important than c because we just had a call with our ceo and the ceo now has made this project the most important thing and he wants to make sure we get d in and you run off to do d and then they call back and then you have another sit down with them or a meeting with them and it's like well you know what i think between d and a we definitely have to get c done and you're like oh my god oh yeah, clients can do that and you don't really have any control because they're the client, they're paying the money, right? So it's like shifting priorities, shifting priorities. Now what you do with that is every time they shift the priority, you shift the timeline. You make them know, hey, you know, if I get this done, we can, we can definitely do it, but it's gonna impact this and this and this, and this is a time estimate for getting that done. Now is it still that important? So you kind of have to push back in the ways that you can. If it's with an internal staff member, you can do the same thing where the timeline is going to change, but also you can start asking more questions if it's internal, like, you know, is there a client waiting on this? Is there a reason why we've changed this priority? And stuff like that. So that's the kind of way stakeholders can be difficult because you have to work with them and they keep shifting the priorities on you and that makes it difficult for everybody because nobody can figure out what they need to do next, right? And then there is the stakeholder that gives you overly complicated information. Like you ask them something simple and they go into all of these acronyms and all of these jargons and they tell you the history about people who even left the company and what they didn't do. And you are overwhelmed. You're like, I know I got a bunch of information but what do I do with it? Like, it's just <laughs> information overload. And typically these people are, you know, like, they're very knowledgeable and you respect their knowledge, but it's like, they don't know how to package that knowledge in a way that a person who's not had their experience, not been at the company that long, not in their world, can actually consume it. They don't have that skill set. It might be that they may not want to be difficult, but they don't have the skill set to package the information in such a way that it can be consumable by somebody who's not living in their world. So those are the kinds of ways that people are difficult. Now, when you meet a person who likes to give you overly complicated information, you have to know when to stop them and say, okay, so you just mentioned the ACS. For you, what does ACS mean? And it could mean something different for me, something different for them. So they gotta go through what an ACS is, and then you gotta say, okay, so when you say uh, 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 the refactoring process, what, what exactly does that mean? So you kind of stop them and clarify, stop them and clarify, and God help you if they wanna clarify and get into more overly complicated details. You know, so again, you can always piggyback on the fact that maybe there's somebody else who has that knowledge that you could get the same information from. Because normally in the organization, not only one person has all the details, right? You could get it from multiple, you know, different sources. But if this is the one person you keep being pointed back to, you got to use your analytical skills. <laughs> you just have to because, yeah, people can give you very, very complicated information that you don't even know how to consume. The other one is 
kind of aligned with the complicated information as a way of being difficult but it's also rambling you have your rambler these are storytellers so you're asking them a pointed question and they're giving you a whole world of story like all of the history all of the details all the people everything so this is kind of good in some cases because you might want to see the history of something you might want to understand how it started but sometimes you just want a pointed answer and you just can't get that pointed answer so what i would do in that situation is when they tell you all of this, all of this, all of this, all this stuff, slim it down, get to the essence of it, and confirm. So after all of that, what I'm understanding is A, B, C, and they confirm, and you say, okay, cool. Just know that you have to budget more time with this kind of person than another kind of person, because you know if you have an hour, you're probably going to go into two hours. If you need 15 minutes, you have to go into an hour because it's going to be so much fluff around the story. Let me turn my phone off because it's just making a lot of noise right here see i'm an important person people keep sending me messages <laughs> okay so the other thing is the way that people can be difficult is that they are unwilling to compromise and this again is very typical with clients um when the client is a stakeholder where they don't want to remove anything they want the whole gamut of everything that was talked about but they want it within the same timeline and they don't want to compromise. They don't want to give on anything. You're like, okay, well, we can get all this done in phase one, but we're going to need at least another six months to complete the other things in phase two. No, no, no. We want the whole thing in phase one. I want it within the same timeline. And you're like, this is not how <laughs> like, we're not going to be able to work magic here. You know, this is not a magician show, but yeah. So people can be difficult because they don't want to compromise. So what you have to do, when you have this kind of um, unwillingness to compromise, you have to work within the parameters that you can, you can't move. Like sometimes in a contract, the price is already fixed, right? Sometimes it's not. So if you can, if you can say, well, we can do, we can put more resources in to get this thing done within this time, but it's going to cost you X, Y, Z more, then maybe they'll change their mind. Or if you say, well, we can give this to you for free, but you're going to have to wait the other six months to get the rest. Then So whatever you can, you can, you can negotiate with, then that's how you try to get the compromise. Um, and always try to find win-win solutions, like things that you win as a, you know, the seller of the company or you representing your company, um, and think that they win. So when you're a business analyst and you're coming up with a feature, most of the time, if we're dealing with internal people, is that we have to deal with developers and maybe we don't have the amount of resources to get the exact feature that we want in. So the compromise will be taking out some of the functionality so we can get something in that's still meeting you know, the need and meeting at least the MVP that we can we can actually deliver so that's usually where we compromise as business analysts and also on processes right so sometimes we're doing a process revamp and we have to eliminate some steps but because we eliminate the steps it causes things to be more expensive or you know even though we reduce the time we affect some other part of the system so it's like how can we find a compromise between both and we have multiple departments who might want different outputs and you have to deliver it to them so always look for opportunities where you can find win-win situations and that way and work within your um your framework so if you can like for example internally you can't really work with price because you're not normally billing a different department but you have people that you know would have to work between both you can say well i can give you a resource on your team if you let me do this within my team you know so you have to work with whatever parameters available to you Chasing your tail. That's the other one. So people can be difficult because they have you doing this. Around and around and around and around. So you talk to Tom and he says, you know, the best person to talk to about this is Mary. Mary says, no, go to John. John says, no, goes to Amy. And so by the time you're done with Amy, you go right back to the person that you started with. And they just keep sending you around and around and around and around. And the reason they do that is because they don't want to actually answer your question, right? They want to just send you on a wild goose chase. That is them being difficult, and sometimes it's because they don't know. It could be that they honestly don't know, and you ask them a bunch of questions that they should know, but they don't know, and so they just pawn you off to somebody else. So when you find that you're being sent around and around, one of the things that you can do is, with the person that you're with, say, no, I want to talk to you. 
I want your input. I want your opinion. I value you. I value your opinion on this. So if you have any thoughts on this at all, I want to hear it. And it's kind of like putting them back in the picture so they know you're not just there to suck out of them for a process or for improving something, but you actually care about what they care about. You care about their world. You care about what they're doing. And that would give them some incentive to be more helpful, to be more open, and that might stop them from being difficult with you. The other thing that you know that someone is being difficult with you is when they give you outright attitude. You know, and this attitude doesn't have to only be verbal, it could be your body language. So, like you're talking to someone and they're like this, or their face expression is like, so they don't have to be like rude, like cursing you out or whatever, but they're just giving you all the cues that they don't care. And they don't have time and this is not their job and they don't report to you and who cares so <laughs> you know you will get attitude like that and sometimes you can't really you can't really change the attitude what i would do if i start in really really bad attitude is i would give the person a break you know i would you know just reschedule the session or have another time later on when they're in a better mood or something i wouldn't want to continue when people are already giving me attitude because I don't want to stop giving them attitude because it's going to rub off on me. So I would rather just reschedule, do it again another day and, you know, kind of start from a different vantage point. So if I started one place that I found that they were not very receptive to, then the next time I meet with them, I try to start somewhere else or try to change it up somehow, switch it up, make it more interesting for them. And hopefully they'll be more motivated to tell me stuff. So that's it. So those are the ways that your stakeholders can be difficult. I hope this was helpful for you to understand that this is a kind of a natural part of the job. Um, as long as you're dealing with a lot of people and you have to get information from people, you will have people who are going to be difficult. And so don't go into the job expecting everybody's going to be nice. It's going to be great. I'm going to just do well. I'm not going to have any trouble. That doesn't happen in the real world. Right? And as a business analyst, remember, you're an agent of change. And so you're going in there to change things and nobody likes that, right? So you just have to find ways to get what you need. But at the same time, when you come across a difficult person, I've just explained to you some of the reasons they could be difficult. You now have to use your analytical skills to see how can I circumvent that problem and what can I do to just make myself um, more amenable and be, be willing to understand their vantage point and for them to be more willing to open up to me. Whatever I can do. There are some people that are going to be so difficult they're just going to give up and be like, I don't even want to deal with them. <laughs> I don't. But, you know, for the sake of the project, for the sake of your job, for the sake of just being a professional, you have to put on a smile and you have to try again. And every time you, you, you find yourself hitting a wall, then you say, okay, what can I do? Maybe I can go around this way. Maybe I can go over. Maybe I can go under. Okay, maybe when I touch this topic, I get a bad response. Let me do it this way. And you get the same result, but you could just find different ways to get to the same result, right? So those are my tips for that. I hope this video was useful. And please, guys, subscribe. Check out my uh, blog, carolise.com. And also check out my Facebook page, facebook.com slash carolies. And I also have a Facebook group that's very active called Real World Business Analysis and IT. So thank you again for watching this video um, and I will see you next time. Take care.